Hello, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be looking at how you can dynamically shatter any polygon scene object, but also how we can trigger what's called recursive shattering. So as it hits the floor, it shatters into so many pieces. And then when those pieces collide with the floor, they shatter again and again. This will remain procedural throughout and can interact with any scene geo. So it's a really cool technique. Let's start Cinema 4D. We'll start the clock and we'll begin. Here we are in our scene then, and we have our Insidium Wolf model and this plane, which is going to be our floor. So let's make this a dynamic scene. We'll lift up our model and with both of these objects selected, we'll go to Tags, Extensions, Insidium, Bullet, and we'll give them both a rigid body tag. Uh, just a quick way of getting them both a bullet tag. But then on the plane one, we need this to actually to be a collision object. So we can just go to that tag to the um, simulation options and change the mode from rigid to collider. There we go. So now if we hit play, we've got a dynamic scene and our model falls to the ground. Excellent. So now let's shatter this into pieces. We'll go to Insidium and we'll go to X Particles, Generators, XP Shatter. We can make the wolf a child of the shatter. And you can see, look, it's got these cut edges, so it's been it's been cut into pieces. And to make this dynamic, all we need to do is move our um, bullet tag up onto the parent object now, the XP shatter, hit play, and now we'll have loads of dynamic shards. Yep, perfect. Now, we've got a couple of display issues here. First of all, we don't need to see these edges, so let's go to XP shatter, display, and uncheck draw cut edges. We don't need that. And look, our UV material, our UV mapping isn't right. It's good on it's good on the outside, but we don't need it to be mapped on the inside chunks. So what we'll do to fix that is we'll move our material from the wolf head to the parent object, to the shatter. And then we can create a selection just for the outer bits. So we'll go to the XP shatter, selections, and we will make a polygon selection of the outer faces. Let's tick that. There is our selection tag that's just been made. So we'll go to our material, drag in that new selection tag into the selection link field. And now we'll have perfect UV mapping on the outside, but it's not being applied to the inside chunks. And we can texture those however we like. All right, so now we want to set up recursive shattering. So these chunks then break into further chunks. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's go to our shatter options, to the object tab. And by default, we're getting our original chunks because we have this default Voronoi layer in. And a child of that is this point generator, which is creating 40 points inside the volume of that object. And those are the points that are being used to then create the, the shards. So for the first layer, we don't actually need so many chunks. Let's just put it down to maybe 12 points. So now that we've got 12 points, there's going to be far fewer bigger chunks. Yeah, that's looking good. So let's say that we want these chunks to then break into further pieces. Well, this is how we do it. We'll go to our add layer and we'll make a new Voronoi layer, which will appear underneath our original. Here it is. And this point generator, we'll set this number of points down, leave everything else default, but we'll set this number of points down to say 10. So every one of those original chunks is able to break into 10 more pieces. But we don't want them to break straight away. We want them to break when they have an impact. So to do that, we'll go to the Voronoi layer. And look, if I just move this up a little bit, in the Voronoi layer, we can go to the trigger options. And by default, it's set to always, but let's set it to collision. And there's three different ways we can trigger off this. There's particle to particle collisions. Well, we're not using particles, so that's not relevant. We can switch it off. Again, particle to polygons, we can switch that off. But look, XP bullet collisions, that's what we're using. That's what's going to work. So then we can put a collision speed to say that the shards have to be moving so fast before they are um, uh, uh, going to break into further pieces. So let's just put, I don't know, a collision speed of three, but then with a variation of two. And we'll hit play and let's see what we get from that. Yes, so we've got our original chunks breaking into pieces and then they're breaking into further chunks. So if we want this to um, retain 
a few more of the bigger ones. Look, let's just put the collision speed up to maybe five with a variation of three. And with that done, let's hit play. Yeah, so look, we've, we've saved these big ones, but this one has broken into further pieces. So that's maybe a little bit too much. So let's change that back down to maybe four. And we'll hit play again. Yeah, that's a nice middle ground. So what if we were able to do another step, another layer of this shattering? Well, let's do that. We'll move up. We'll add another Voronoi layer. In this one, we'll say that all of those secondary shards can then shatter into 10 more. And we'll go back to the Voronoi layer settings, the new Voronoi layer. We'll set it to, again, collision. It's just bullet collision. Let's put a speed of, say, 2, the variation of 2. Um, let's have a go, see what we get. Yes, and now look, these ones, we're getting a, a third layer of shattering with even more shard points. So that is how we set up layers of what's called recursive shattering, chunks breaking into further chunks and then breaking into further chunks still using our layering system inside XP Shatter.